Hey everybody, welcome back to the High Performance Build in Atlanta. I am here with uh, Jeff Hebner of Padstone Geotechnical Engineering. Hello, Jeff. It's good to see you again. Um, we are, sadly, uh, doing more investigation into this hole in the background. You can see that that machine right there is what's called a trash pump. Disgusting. I woke up at like four o'clock in the morning and was like, there must be a machine that pumps out a giant swimming pool of muddy water. And so then I went and rented one and I've got it for the whole week because it's been raining like crazy and I am pissed. So we have Jeff, who is the first line of defense as far as the performance stuff goes. And the real deal is you get a structural engineer to tell you like, this is what the loads are on the building and all that stuff. And then uh, they say, well, the soil, we don't know anything about. And of course we ran into these problems and I tried to find somebody like you. And of course the first couple companies that I find on the internet are not gonna help because they only do commercial. They don't do residential. They were like, here's the one guy that you should go to. So why does somebody like you exist? And why is it so hard to find a geotechnical engineer who does residential? Well, we exist for the same reason the guys do uh, commercial work because number one, we like it. Uh, every building you build, whether it's a house or a large building, needs a good foundation. We can all agree on that. Mm. But a lot of companies uh, stick to the larger stuff for whatever reason. I find that some of the uh, home builders, number one, it's important because a lot of the people that I work for, they're going to live in the home. In right. this case, like, like you. Yep. And so it's very important to them that things get done right. right. And a lot of homeowners don't know exactly what kind of members of a design team they need to put together. And if you don't have your foundations done right and the soil work and things you do at the beginning of the project, well, you just it leads to problems later on. Right. And, and at that time, it's very expensive and difficult and this, to fix. That's that factor of the factors of 10, right? So it costs like one unit to do it right now in the planning stage. It costs 10 units to do it in the middle of construction to switch things. And then if you do it after, it costs 100 units to do the same job that we should have done in the first place, right? So that's, And we can help you with the 100 units, which you're right. Then we're going in and doing we don't want to do retroactive that. fixes and right. things so you can do it right the first time. It's that old adage, and it's true. Right. Okay. So what we've got here is giant rock masses is what he, he calls them, and I love that because I tried it. I was like saying boulder, and I was like that does not say what these things are. They are literally the size of whales in here. You can't really see on the because of the shadows and stuff like that. But like I swear to God, these things are huge. Jeff does not know if there's soil underneath them which would make them rock masses. We also have a junkyard that we found because people are idiots and they're slobs. And then we've got a septic tank, um, which we don't have to use. We're gonna take that out. So what exactly is Kisan back here doing for us? So what we're trying to do right now is get an idea of what is underneath the foot footprint of your home. What are the soils that are down there? Maybe rock, things like that. And we use the subsurface information. We kind of model that. And then we take collaborating with you and the structural team, what the building loads are gonna be. And then we try to figure out things like uh, foundation, potential foundation settlements. Mm. In this case, you're also going to put some fill to raise the grade up. Uh, so quite a lot will, of it. Yeah, right, quite a lot. So that will, uh, that will increase some new loads onto the existing soil. So we really want to find out what the subsurface conditions look like below what we're seeing now. So mm. what's down five feet? What's down 10 feet? Is it soil? Is it more of this rock that we're seeing exposed to the surface? Does the junkyard give you pause? Do you think that maybe there's more of that down? Probably not. In this case, it appears that there was some previous construction at the site, obviously. Those buildings were removed, and when they remove them, a lot of times they'll just find a hole and dump stuff. So you found the dump stuff that they did. Right. Uh, and it looks like you've got decent soil underneath that. So, you, so we're hoping that, that you've identified the areas and remove that material. So if we do find any, in, in, then, then those will be areas that we'll have to take care of uh, cool. as, you, as you move forward. Okay, so next step is we make sure that the stuff, the footing that's gonna sit on this rock over here is not gonna uh, stay perfectly still while the stuff that's way out there that's gonna be filled is gonna settle by an inch or two, right? And which is like, that's bad, oh, an inch. Oh, in one corner of the house and you start having what what happens to a house well they call that differential settlement so you have no settlement under the rock supported buildings you might have an inch or so under the other ones and depending on how the building's designed and the distance between that it might not be a big deal mm -hmm. uh, you can also uh, construct those place the fill wait a little bit let some of that settlement happen so that by the time you get to building construction the differential settlement is uh, limited please reduced. don't tell me to wait anymore well, we're I'm, not, not going to wait long. <laughs> In this particular instance, it, that kind of settlement occurs over a relatively short period of time. Awesome. Weeks, not months and years. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, cool. So I will let you know what happens next. But basically, good news that Jeff let us know is that we can use that dirt that we pulled out of here. As long as it doesn't have big roots and stuff like that in it, we can actually reuse some of that dirt. So I am going to be paying 
about four to $5,000 for some dirt to be brought here, which I'm like, there's so much dirt around here, but we want good dirt and that's very important. So uh, please stay tuned, make sure you subscribe, like, comment. If you wanna find out more about Geotechnical, go ask him, I don't know anything about that stuff. <laughs> Tune in next time.